Hi, I'm Jake, and I'm gonna share my top five After Effects tips for editors who are new to the program. Let's do this. Tip number one, you don't need all the panels. Just like any good Adobe software, there are a bazillion panels in After Effects, but you seriously do not need to look at all of them at once. So let's close the ones we don't need and just focus on the essentials. Start by making sure that your workspace is set to default. You should be able to see that right up here. If you don't, come to the window menu, workspace, and set it to default. And if your workspace still doesn't look like mine, make sure that you come all the way down to say reset default to save layout, and then it should look like this. Now, a lot of these panels are pretty unnecessary, especially for beginners. The absolute essential panels for working in After Effects are this project panel, composition, timeline, and effect controls. And effect controls isn't actually open right now, so let's go ahead and do that by going up to window, down to this section right here, and effect controls. The project panel is where all of the assets you have inside of After Effects will live. The composition panel is where you'll actually interactively see what you're working on. It's like a canvas. The timeline is very similar to what we have in an editor, but it's kind of combined with the layer structure in Photoshop. This is where we can select and modify all of the layers in our composition. And then the effect controls panel. This is where we can access any properties from effects that we've added to any given layer. And the other panels I think are worth keeping open are character, paragraph, effects and presets, and align. So we can close all of these other ones just by selecting the hamburger menu for each one and saying close panel. As you get more comfortable with After Effects, you'll learn more about when and how to use those other panels, but for now, just stick with the basics. Tip number two, importing can be complicated, but you'll be fine. Importing things like footage and still images into After Effects is generally pretty easy. You just double click the project panel, navigate to the file and click import. But when you need to import something a little bit more complicated, like maybe a multi-layered PSD, the heck does this mean? Take some deep breaths, focus on me, and let's walk through this together. After Effects wants to know how you'd like to handle this multi-layered PSD. Should it stay flattened and just behave like any other still image? Then choose footage. If you need access to the individual layers, which is more likely, then you have two choices, composition or retain layer sizes. If you just choose composition, every layer within the PSD will set its bounding box to the size of the document, which in most cases is annoying. Instead, choosing retain layer sizes will keep the bounding box of each layer sized to the layer. This way you'll be able to clearly see the bounds of each layer in your comp. The process is the same for a layered Illustrator document, but the wording is just a little different. Start by choosing either footage for a flat image or composition to preserve the layers. Then choose document size or layer size and you're ready to go. Tip number three, you don't always have to use the pen tool. The pen tool is great and you can draw basically anything you want with it, but it takes some time to learn how to use properly can actually get away with a lot in motion graphics just by using basic shapes. And After Effects primitive shapes have some unique controls that make creating and even animating graphics quick and easy. Just choose the shape tool that you wanna use and then click and drag to make a shape layer. You can change the color and even add a stroke right up here in the toolbar. Dive into the shape controls down here in the timeline to play around with all the unique features that each shape type has to offer. And for some real fun, start to experiment with shape operators you can find in this menu. With some time and effort, you can create some really fun looking graphics using very basic shapes. Tip number four, get ready to animate some lines. It's inevitable that at some point you will be asked to animate a line drawing on. Fortunately, that's pretty dang easy to do. I realize I just told you you don't always have to use the pen tool, but the simplest way to draw a single line in After Effects is with the pen tool. So grab that and let's make a straight line across the comp. Just click one to start the line, click a second time to end the line, now let's get rid of the fill color by clicking on it up here and selecting the red slash, and then set the stroke to something nice and thin. Now dive into the shape layer, into the shape group, and use the operators menu we just looked at to add a trim paths. This is what will let us trim the path back from either end so that the stroke is only applied to a portion of that line at any given point in time. I'll back the end value all the way down to 0%, set a keyframe by clicking on this stopwatch, move forward in time, and change the value back up to 100%. After Effects automatically adds a second keyframe and now it's animating on. To smooth out the motion just a touch, I'm gonna to select these two keyframes and press the F9 key on the keyboard to easy ease them. You could also right click on the keyframes, go to Keyframe Assistant and choose Easy Ease. Now I'm gonna wipe the line off by copying these two keyframes, selecting the start value further down in the timeline and pasting. Now the same values and easing are applied to the start value and the line disappears. 
From here, I can go to town duplicating this shape, modifying the path with the pen tool, repositioning and retiming keyframes however I want, and make as many things as I want draw on and off in the same way. Bonus tip, use text animation presets. Animating text is probably something you're already trying to learn how to do, but have you seen what a text animator looks like? But don't worry, you don't have to learn how to use text animators yet because there are lots of text animation presets that come with After Effects. In fact, there are a ton of them that were just added to the most recent version of After Effects, eight of which were created by yours truly. So get ready to take a screenshot because this is a list of all of the new text animation presets that are now included with After Effects. You can search for any of them by name in the Effects and Presets panel. I'm gonna quickly just type out some text with the text tool, give it a little skew with the transform effect and use a text animator preset called scale from point to have this text animate on from the center outward. Just like that, my text is animating on and I've got all kinds of controls over here in my effect controls panel to change how the text animation looks. Tip number five, grunge it up. After Effects is full of, wait for it, effects. Hundreds of them. You can throw entire stacks of effects on top of your motion graphics to create all sorts of looks, but one of my personal favorite effects is Turbulent Displace. Turbulent Displace distorts whatever you apply it to, and I wanna apply it to the entire composition. So I'll start by making an adjustment layer. Any effects I apply to this layer will affect anything below it in the layer stack. Now we'll just search for the Turbulent Displace effect over here in the Effects and Presets panel, drag that effect to the adjustment layer, and now my entire comp is being distorted. I want to dial this back so I'll adjust the size of the displacement to something much smaller. This looks good, but it's totally static. I want this to look like every frame of my composition is being uniquely distorted, so I'm going to go down into the random seed property and set a keyframe at the start of my timeline. Then I'll move to the end of the timeline and increase this value to something much higher. Now every single frame of my comp will have a unique random distortion applied and everything in the comp now has a textured look. Now, my comp is running at 24 frames per second, which is a pretty traditional animation frame rate, but I'd like to see what all this motion looks like at half that frame rate. And I'll add another effect to this adjustment layer to do just that. Posterize time will let me set the frame rate to anything I want, so I'll drop this down to 12 frames per second and play it back. Now it has an even more hand on look. Since there are literally hundreds of effects in After Effects, it's gonna take you a while to even know what they all do, but I've actually created an entire tutorial series over on my channel, Jake in Motion, called The Effects of After Effects, where I cover all of the controls of every single effect in After Effects. So if there's one in particular that you wanna know about, just search for it on my channel, and I will have a video that covers it. But those are some of my tips for editors getting started in After Effects. There are lots of new courses being dropped at School of Motion, and if you wanna know about them first, make sure that you subscribe to this channel so you get notified as soon as they launch. Thanks for watching.